But the thing is about time and stuff. Okay. And it's a very great pleasure for me to introduce Mika, who's a Ralph Kunstberger. Uh, who will learn us about a bunch of options in a quite different machine as I guess we used to. But uh, I hope is that will actually stimulate some new thoughts also among us that it's used to use those normal physical or optical proteins. But by looking into what is really possible with the advanced life sources and then material science uh, today, in order to make a very, uh, let's say, uh, precise uh, X ray type of experiments. So I will not make a very long introduction to you, Ralph. <laughs> but Ralph, he got his PhD degree in 1994 uh, from Hamburg University and seven years in the spirit of the And uh, then he went on uh, as a postdoc at the uh, advanced photon uh, source, it's called, I think, uh, in the uh, Argonne National Laboratory in the, in the States, uh, from where he went to Boston University and spent a few years there. Went to Pickford University in Munich and then uh, back to Hamburg again uh, and spent quite some years in 2003 being uh, affiliated as a senior scientist uh, at the, the, the DCE, the, the Dutch Institute of Foreign I don't know what the Y is saying, but it's a new right? Right, right, right. right. Uh, and, uh, but since also uh, two years ago in 2020, I mean, Wolf has been appointed as a full professor at the Kimmel's Institute in Vienna and also the Schlecht Schiller University. So we look very much forward to hear about what type of very interesting or what about these experiments we're going to do. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael, for this uh, nice uh, introduction. And for the uh, invitation to come here for the first time in my life to Orbit. And uh, I enjoyed it very uh, much today. I mean, there are always two challenges a speaker meets uh, in a colloquium in such a setting. Uh, first of all, uh, the speaker might be, uh, from all the exposure and discussions, uh, too tired to give at the end of the day uh, one hour colloquium. And it was very exciting, so uh, I think I have enough adrenaline in my blood to do this uh, presentation. And second, uh, uh, another challenge is to, uh, yeah, that he might think um, that uh, by listening to all the colleagues here uh, in the department, he could have changed and adapted the content of the presentation to the audience better. So, uh, so this is, of course, not possible uh, <laughs> anymore, but I hope I can match this and, and, and address uh, a rather broad audience here. Uh, Good afternoon. So yeah, um, <clears throat> let's uh, get started. Uh, so this this talk is in the broadest sense about light, and uh, as the title says, it's X-ray light, and um, we didn't have something like imaging in the title. So this is uh, the broadest sense, uh, yeah, uh, an application of uh, photonics, and uh, <clears throat> uh, which is addressed basically the uh, applications and science of light for applications and applications of light that have fascinated mankind for, for centuries, uh, uh, resulting in numerous, numerous applications in daily life. So uh, uh, I've just uh, uh, collected a few uh, sketches uh, from, the, from the internet and we are, uh, we are all in, uh, aware of that basically photonics this is basically almost everywhere. So we have laser processes like welding, printing, scanning and so on. We have uh, angle optics for data and uh, uh, transmission. We have all kinds of imaging and spectroscopy with photons. We have yeah, harvesting of solar energy, solar panels, DVD and Blu ray data storage, and uh, LED lighting, and, and so on and so on. Quantum communication. So it's just natural to explore photonics concepts uh, in basically all the, the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Which includes also fixed rates. So let's have a little uh, tiny look back. Actually, uh, the, the evolution of present day photonic technologies was not always straightforward, uh, but encountered a number of uh, detours where a very prominent one was taken by a group of, of German fellows called the uh, Simpletons or the Schildburger. So, uh, most of you with uh, German roots or contact with Germany might mm -hmm. know. Uh, uh, that this might be considered one of the first uh, attempts to control and manipulate light. 
So the simple thing is the uh, tail is saying that they built the town hall and plug up the windows. And uh, to <laughs> mitigate this problem, they uh, try to, uh, yeah, to collect light in boxes and uh, move it into the town hall. Uh, I mean, this is, of course, nowadays we know that this is not a concept to save money for public duties, uh, of course. Uh, uh, but anyway, I mean, this is a detail uh, uh, that um, reflects some kind of first approaches to uh, control light. We know, all know that this uh, are uh, more advanced versions available, and uh, here some examples uh, without um, sake of completeness uh, I have collected here. So, uh, Know that uh, light can be uh, actually put into boxes, into cavities, for example, and to do parallel mirrors where actually you can uh, uh, achieve very high Q factors. Uh, this is one of the early, uh, one of the, well, uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, a publication. This is a uh, of drag mirrors where actually you have a bottom board that is here and, uh, and uh, confined actually light to interact very efficiently. Uh, the carbon dot. And uh, yeah, uh, other type of resonators like this Lisbury Gallery ones, they achieve even higher quality factors where the uh, light is propagating here on, on, on the close trajectory inside of this disk here. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, it's all invisible, in the non storage type of light. And uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> and uh, this concept can, uh, was put forward to study the light matter interaction. Basically, on the level of uh, single quarter of light and matter, <coughs> single atoms, single, pro uh, single protons. And uh, yeah, this eventually resulted in the Felix Nobel Prize 2012 for Roche and Weiland. And uh, you see uh, the concept of putting light into boxes was not so stupid, actually. It worked in a different way. Yeah, and uh, the question is can this be achieved in the ICTO regime as well? Of course, we would be happy about the Nobel Prize also, but uh, okay, let's first try to put X rays into boxes. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, this is the approach, the answer to the question yes, we can. Um, we can uh, confine X rays as standing waves in cavity like structures, which are layered systems, um, like uh, is sketched here, where um, uh, the particular properties, optical properties of matter for X-rays have to be uh, considered. Um, so uh, that is actually which needs some, some explanation where you really have to uh, be attentive now because that is a central concept here uh, to learn first of all the effects of attraction um, uh, of matter for X-rays. So uh, X-rays penetrate matter very easily, so the index of perfection is, is close to one. It's not exactly one, it's written like this. It's one minus delta. And uh, this delta um, is uh, yeah, of the order of 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 6. It depends on the electron density, it depends on the wavelength. Uh, I, I don't want to give too much formula here. Uh, you only need to know the, the average, the value uh, uh, that leads to um, yeah, the fact that. Um, uh, any material, I mean, yeah, you have to digest this here properly. Any material uh, is uh, optically thinner than the vacuum from the perspective of X-rays. So the transition from vacuum into a material is the transition from an optically thick to an optically thin material. Yeah, that's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, yeah, we are all used to the other way around. Uh, but um, uh, that means that at this interface, uh, vacuum or air to matter, we have total reflection under angles measured to the relative to the surface of only a few milliradian. Yeah, at very shallow angles, we encounter total reflection of X-rays. And that is illustrated here. Uh, uh, so to give you a favor, uh, one degree, one angular degree is 17.5 milliradian. So uh, one milliradian is a quite small angle. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, that is measured relative to the surface. Um, so, yeah, it's a typical um, layer systems. I mean, this is a, a I don't know before I talk about that, I mean, this is actually the basis for studying thin film systems with X rays. I and mean, that is an established technique in X ray science 
to study the properties of the films with X rays. That is nothing what we invented, uh, but we are using this for building cavities. And uh, <clears throat> what uh, a cavity is in this case here, uh, it's a little bit different from what I've shown before. This is a, uh, a mirror a system of, uh, consisting of two palladium layers, uh, which are uh, sandwiching carbon layer. Siri was responding in China. Yeah, so um, uh, that means, yeah, evanescent coupling is possible. So, so you can actually, um, uh, it's, 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 here you have the depth quantity, uh, uh, the uh, measure of the thicknesses of the layers. So we are talking about thicknesses of a few nanometer. Yeah, so we have here zero is the surface, 10, 20, 30 nanometer. And uh, we have actually a higher penetration depth of uh, the radiation coming here, uh, incident on the surface, and penetrating into the material. The thickness of this layer is smaller than the penetration depth, so the uh, radiation can travel through this thin layer uh, into the guiding layer here of that uh, waveguide, which is actually a planar waveguide also. It's a cavity in that direction. Mm -hmm. It's a cavity in this direction. And the wave propagates in that direction. So, uh, and, uh, so we have to optimize the, uh, that is a critical value, the thickness of that layer here, uh, which needs to be only a few nanometers so that the uh, radiation can come out. But this uh, layer should exhibit a sufficiently high reflectivity for the radiation that is inside to uh, uh, propagate there. And then uh, the result of this propagation is the formation of a standing wave. This is the first order mode with an enormous enhancement of the normalized field density inside of the layer compared to the incident uh, value. Uh, here it's a, a factor of 25 for each uh, at a particular angle. And um, the quality factor, however, compared to the previously shown cavities, is rather low. We are in the range of, say, about 100. Uh, so it's a, it's a bad cavity in the quantum of the field language. Yeah, but that isn't bad for what we want to do. Uh, so um, it's a bad cavity, uh, but if we want to have high quality factors, uh, we can still shift this to the atom that we put into the cavity. Uh, so we need long-lived atomic levels in the x ray regime instead. Yeah, uh, and that is actually shown here. What do we have? What possibilities do we have? There are transitions in the electron or binding energies of the electron shells shown here, electron shell nucleus. So that's actually coming to the core of the problem. Here, uh, uh, I will talk about what was my attention here on the nuclei, on electromagnetic levels on the nuclei that actually uh, also have lateral energies in the uh, regime of hard X rays. So, uh, to just uh, put it in perspective, we all know the electron binding energies of having the other shells in the electron. Volt regime where core electrons are bound uh, with the electron volt binding energies. So, correspondingly, we have transitions uh, uh, which uh, emit uh, uh, in the recombination emit X rays in the hard X ray regime. The same is the case for nuclei uh, which have low lying uh, levels, which are in this case in the kilo electron volt range. These are the low lying levels of the nuclei because the other levels, the uh, electromagnetic levels, in the nuclei are in the mega electron volt regime, of course, that is the binding energy regime of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So we are interested in, in those here. So here, across the border, we have the first exhibition, for example, after photo absorption, uh, and this leads to femtosecond lifetime of the core holes. Here we have nuclear fluorescence, and we have nanosecond to millisecond lifetimes of nuclear levels. Yeah? Uh, and, and so the, the nuclear levels, these levels are, are pretty long lived. Um, and um, why is that? Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, these are the first power isotopes. These electromagnetic levels um, of the nuclei are uh, belonging to the so-called first power isotopes because at those small energies, uh, small energies, the uh, emission and absorption of photons addressing these two level systems here. Uh, are basically occurring without recoil because 
die, ähm, also zwar bauen wir zwar mit der Source Strong bauen, der Wind Coil Energy uh, is much smaller than the typical thermal energy, so the typical vibrational energies, so that uh, the, um, uh, the wind coil that is imparted, which is in the regime of uh, two or three milli electron volt, is much smaller than these thermal energies, so the, 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 this wind coil energy cannot be absorbed by, by, by the solid, uh, it cannot excite the photon. Yeah, uh, because the photon energies are so much higher, so that there is no chance, no other chance than for the whole solid, even the recoil partner for the photon that is emitted from. Yeah, uh, so that means uh, it's uh, basically, um, <coughs> uh, if you remember the recoil energy uh, uh, momentum squared by two times the mass of the emitting object, the recoil energy is basically zero. So uh, that is the recoil is emission and absorption which is forming the ground for the Merstoric effect. For which a good of first hour, uh, got the Nobel Prize already three years after the discovery of that effect. Uh, and because uh, there was a number of applications, a number of other first hour isotopes uh, being discovered. Here are listed a few, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you uh, see that, uh, yeah, they cover a uh, condition uh, energy range. We talk about six uh, kiloelectron volts up to almost 30 kiloelectron volts uh, here in, in that regime. Uh, there are, uh, uh, here are The line widths, actually, the resonances are very sharp. Um, IR57, which is the one that is mostly used, is a line width, a natural line width of 4.7 nanoelectron volt only. So it's a relative uh, resolution, a relative bandwidth of 3 times 10 to the minus 13. That is, in, that is an enormous uh, uh, spectral resolution. Um, um, uh, but there are other isotopes which supersede this. Uh, like zinc, scandium, or thorium 229, which is, uh, yeah, uh, has uh, made it uh, even in the daily press sometimes, uh, uh, <coughs> because uh, this would actually be a, 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 a uh, sharp nuclear tradition qualifying for a nuclear clock that could eventually monitor the uh, time dependence of fundamental constants in, in nature uh, that uh, is hypothesized. Uh, the consequence of the expansion of the universe. Uh, uh, so, uh, so these extremely sharp uh, uh, conditions could be used for extreme metrology and fundamental science. So, but uh, here, yeah, here we are more down to earth, so to say, uh, with this item for I57. So, uh, so uh, the lifetime is still, uh, uh, it's very long if you convert this here uh, into a time. Um, <clears throat> by uh, h bar over gamma naught is 140 nanoseconds. Uh, the lifetime is so long because compared to the nuclear dimensions of the wave function of the photon, the wave length of the photon is quite long, so the overlap integral is small. Uh, that's why uh, there is a small probability uh, for the photon being emitted from the atom, uh, <clears throat> from, the, from the nucleus. That's why the lifetime is so long and it is an experimentally nicely accessible regimes. Yeah. Uh, and that is what I want to illustrate further. I have to set the ground for, 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 for what follows, of course, uh, to uh, ex ex uh, explain the working force here. Uh, and uh, that is the IM57 isotope. The IM57 is a naturally occurring stable isotope. It's about 2.2% of all naturally occurring iron. It's IM57, the isotope. Uh, and uh, we typically buy it in a rich form to uh, make uh, layers out of it, that comes later. Uh, and here are again the parameters. It's a basically ideal level system. Here is actually shown the atomic scattering amplitudes as a function of energy. So here would be uh, what is shown this little things here, this is the uh, absorption edge, the 7.1 keV absorption edge of uh, uh, the K-shell electrons in the atom uh, with their spectral dependence. Uh, and uh, compared to that, we have here the enormously large uh, scattering amplitude of the nuclear resonance. However, uh, yeah, 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 this is actually yeah, a, a, a textbook-like Lorentzian uh, complex Lorentzian uh, contributions on the, of the real and preliminary part of that resonance. You see the dispersive part and the absorptive part here that uh, actually enter here into the, into the refractive index. So. These uh, quantities actually we have to put together to get the right index of refraction, including, if you want, uh, the part of the nuclear resonance here. 
So that's all, all optics of this. And can be used here at the medium description with a index of perfection concept. Yeah, uh, that's taking into account this resonance behavior here. Um, that's what I said already. And, uh, but, um, yeah, I, uh, don't have, uh, of course, time to explain all, uh, everything about first law spectroscopy. I just want to, um, explain you the modern version of this, um, only 25 years old. Now, uh, first law spectroscopy with simple radiation. Uh, normally, um, uh, one would record the energy spectrum. With the Doppler drive and uh, 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 <coughs> the radio source, and then measure the absorption profile and measure these, these sharp absorption lines um, spectrally. But um, since the lifetime is so long, you can convert this method also in the time resolved uh, version. And this works with the signal with the pulse signal radiation shown in this animation. Here's a sample containing some iron 57 atoms that are illuminated uh, with a Broadband pulse here with the short pulse, uh, where uh, for a short time um, the atoms uh, are excited um, <clears throat> in the material and then they re radiate um, uh, their respective energies. So, in a magnetic environment, this um, transition is uh, split. We have the nuclear Zeeman effect here at work. Um, so, if the um, iron in the material is uh, Exposed to a magnetic field in the magnetic material, for example, we get this. We get six dipole allowed transitions here. Uh, so uh, compared to the 40.4 kV uh, transition, these splittings are in the regime of a few tiny nano electrons. So, right? I mean, this gives you a flavor of the relative energies here. Uh, and uh, for simplicity, I've picked out three of those here and three, three wave trains actually coming out here. And um, what we observe is, of course, in the uh, the far field after uh, the transition, the superposition of all these lines, so two uh, uh, frequencies, they give a uh, Moray pattern with a signal frequency. If we put uh, another uh, frequency on top, uh, we get a more complex pattern. And if we superpose all of them, we get a temporal weak pattern, mm -hmm. like this here, that is a metal one from an iron a metal foil. And this, uh, yeah. It's a fingerprint, basically, in this case, of the magnetic structure of the sample. So from this, we can derive the magnitude of the magnetic fields and their direction in the material. And uh, so this has uh, applications in not only magnetism, material science, geophysics, chemistry, biophysics, and so on. So a multitude of applications is uh, possible. And I had the pleasure to write this up uh, some years ago uh, in my habitation thesis, uh, uh, many examples. Uh, from that field. So that is actually the, the method. And um, <clears throat> this is, uh, oops, again, yeah, this is again the slide coming back to this. Um, now we have um, uh, we have a cavity in wave guide. We have an atom. We have iron 57 atoms. And I explain you why uh, use these, these atoms. We now study the interaction um, of these uh, uh, rest of our isotopes, these two level systems, with the electromagnetic field inside of the cavity. Um, and so this is a slide that I showed you before. Now we put the iron 57 atoms in there. We do this with the deposition uh, technology uh, that I'm also going to show briefly. So that's, yeah, uh, uh, pointing to this, uh, we prepare thin, thin cavities with ultra smooth interfaces. So that's actually a requirement here uh, to make this work. We need to prepare uh, highly uh, smooth digital uh, systems, and that's what we do in our labs. Uh, indeed, indeed, at the end in Vienna, so that is a nighttime time use, so to say, of our deposition system uh, at work. And so it's a chamber, it's really the chamber here. I uh, uh, show you uh, that's the daytime uh, image, so to say. In Vienna, actually, you build a similar system in Vienna. Recently, which is coming into work very soon. And uh, here is a um, uh, inside view. We look along the axis of the cylindrical chamber. I want to show you how such a process works. Oops, I have to start it here. Uh, hopefully, it works. Um, Mm 
Yeah, I was uh, a uh, structure that moves along the axis and carries a sample, which is actually uh, shown here. So here is a, here's where the metal vapor of the sputter process comes from. So we vaporize basically uh, the material uh, in the uh, discharge uh, the plasma, so to say, and uh, the metal vapor is then uh, propagating into the chamber and where the sample is actually there, the vapor is uh, uh, landing and forming a thin film and we uh, control the film because by the, the quarter time and the control of the direction from which the atoms are landing on the sample by aligning the polar and azimuth angle of the sample relative to the infringing atoms. That's how we control the uh, sputtering, uh, the deposition process of these thin films and uh, this that we have developed over over a few decades, basically, we've been always our papers on ourselves. And um, we have also industrial applications, it's just a larger channel for that. And um, this is as an, as an information. So we are coming from material science, basically, but we are also interested in fundamental applications and particularly to the, to the uh, quantum optics of X rays. And um, yeah, so um, let's now uh, have a look and continue what happens if we put. I'm 57 atoms in such a cavity. Yeah, so let's have a look at a single atom first. Yeah, uh, so a single atom or many of them, if you look at the info here, look at fluorescence and analyze the energy distribution, uh, uh, we report a, a spectrum like this, an energy spectrum like this. This would be a, a mass power spectrum uh, from a single resonance, single nuclear resonance of iron 57. Um, this might be many atoms, but they all emit independently and incoherently. So, uh, it is a uh, yeah, uh, uh, experimental resolution included that is a width of 2.2 uh, gamma naught. Um, uh, it's a conversion electron mass power spectrum. So, uh, what happens now if we uh, take uh, many, many atoms and uh, form them into a, a layer, which is now a cross section in uh, the layer uh, inside of this cavity here? So, we uh, uh, inside the cavity, for example, the first order mode where the intensity inside of the cavity is maximum. And what we measure is this spectrum. Um, you see a striking difference between modes, but uh, almost all have to explain. You yeah, see a broadening and enormous broadening and a shift uh, of the center of gravity here of this uh, distribution. This was done at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. By the 18 uh, years of the model. And um, yeah, um, so to take a long story short, uh, uh, what uh, happens is that, uh, uh, yeah, what, what we have is uh, here is actually we have recorded the reflected signal from the uh, 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 Everything is going back and forth here, and the uh, partial waves that are coming out here that we really report the energy spectrum of the reflected signal. Uh, in this setting, all atoms contribute to the same phase, scattering phase, and the cavity in this way uh, selects a, select, um, a, a radiative eigenmode of the ensemble. Uh, and this is something you have to believe me. Um, the radiative eigenmode you see from the fact that we have a Lorentzian line shape here. Uh, I mean, uh, please disregard this here. There is an artifact. We have this under, under control, or, or yeah, um, uh, basically, all the, we don't have it under control, but we understand it where it comes from. Uh, there is a perfect shell, some museum had a final reaction that leads, leads to a deformation of the resonance line, but this does not change the, the, the physics here. Um, so we have a, a Lorentzian, a very, a very good approximation of Lorentzian line shape. We can be sure that this is the radiative eye mode of this ensemble. Atoms in the cavity. And um, yeah, so uh, the bottom line of this uh, slide is that new optical uh, phenomena emerge with atoms and cavities. This is a, uh, a, a, a information that applies also in the optical vision, of course, and in the X ray as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so what is the origin of these effects? And now we come to some uh, yeah, uh, quantum optics. Um, uh, in this case, it's a uh, uh, super radiance. So when uh, the simulation that we encounter here is that a single photon and uh, this, the simple radiation source, we have uh, at most one 
und dann als als Source äh, 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 und die Experimente setup this resonant we interact with the ensemble of n identical atoms so uh, uh, choosing n equal to pi so we have um, yeah, we can have either this 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 or that atom being excited we don't know which one that means we have to superpose all these amplitudes here because all these uh, configurations they decay to the same uh, final state. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, <coughs> um, this uh, situation, we have the uh, addition of, of, of one real photon, so to say, from that um, um, system here, and that means that the collective decay is enhanced by a factor of 10. So uh, as if you would drill uh, in a bucket, you uh, instead of one hole, you drill five holes, the bucket will empty five times faster than with a single hole. Right? I mean, that is a classical uh, simple analog that, that uh, uh, quite remarkably applies also here for this case. Yeah, so that's a, uh, a physics that uh, Robert Dicke has uh, drawn up already uh, in the middle of the last century. Um, and uh, that is for Dicke uh, super radiance in this case. Uh, we have uh, a small sample limit, uh, the large sample limit is uh, more complicated, but uh, this I cannot focus on here today. Uh, um, <clears throat> the, uh, however, what uh, I've shown here that applies also for the um, cavity physics here because uh, I can say that already here, uh, compared to the standing wave inside of the cavity, this uh, layer here, this central I57 layer, is, uh, has a smaller extension, of course, than the spacing of this. Um, Instead of the mirrors here. That is, uh, ensures the validity of the small sample limit um, of the super radiance um, uh, here that uh, is comes uh, valid. So, in principle, uh, we have this enhancement of 65, uh, n equals 65. That means that effectively 65 atoms, resonant atoms, were participating in the scattering process here on the bridge. Um, okay, so. Um, so we have, I uh, underlined here real photon, but um, yeah, we have also virtual photons to consider in quantum optics, right? Uh, uh, there's, uh, the virtual photons are, uh, at, at the, the concept of this is actually at the basis of quantum molecular dynamics, of course, uh, Lund and Rutherford in their famous experiment, they uh, identified this uh, exchange of virtual photons as the origin of the so-called lump shift of the lifting of the degeneracy of the uh, 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 2p one half and 2p three half levels of, uh, of hydrogen, and <clears throat> um, and this actually uh, set the stage for how to treat uh, the um, virtual photons and the exchange with the, uh, uh, the exchange with the with the atom uh, with the bound system. Uh, uh, Set the uh, stage for the new right uh, theory, which turned out to be quantum molecular dynamics in the, in the modern days, of course. Uh, and this, uh, the exchange of virtual photons led to, uh, yeah, uh, uh, energy change of atomic levels, as you know, uh, it's a sort of atomic cell energy correction. And um, <clears throat> this applies also, um, uh, has also been taken into account that we have more than one atom. Interacting with a bar of virtual photons. If we have, uh, say, n identical atoms, then of course, doesn't matter for the virtual photon if they are uh, interacting with the same or with the identical atoms in the vicinity. So we have the cloud of identical atoms acting as a giant atom, and we have to sum up more of these diagrams, so to say, uh, <coughs> to get uh, uh, the full story. So we have also a contribution of uh, yeah, a collective uh, uh, shift of the energy uh, to the self energy to the ensemble self energy, and that was uh, brought up by Friedberg and co workers in the, in the 70s of last century. So, that, that is actually uh, leading to the shift that we have observed here uh, that I've shown you before. And uh, so, we have uh, two effects that uh, happen uh, that we encounter when we put atoms in chemicals. <laughs> so, we have an exchange of real and virtual photons. So the real ones, uh, they uh, enhance the width uh, of the uh, spectral response, 
and the virtual photon say leads to a shift of uh, this uh, spectral time. And uh, that's actually what we what we have observed. And uh, this was, of course, yeah, uh, for us uh, uh, um, <coughs> published this in a journal that uh, um, <coughs> was even taking our um, illustration in, in the cover here. Um, so I always was thinking, how, how, how can I illustrate this, uh, visualize this uh, cavity physics? Yeah, and uh, you all know if you put something between two parallel mirrors, uh, either your own head uh, at the at the barber uh, shop, yeah, uh, or you put a bottle of wine and uh, have it multiplied by uh, the kind of interactions between two two mirrors that are here in parallel. Um, you get this image, and the art director of science was excited by this and took it as a as uh, a uh, title here, uh, the title page, uh, uh, Scully and Zulinski, uh, uh, they uh, wrote a perspective article on this, uh, emphasizing, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, another way how to uh, summarize this, uh, physics, namely the quantum uh, field effects, super radians of the collective lunches are magnified by collective active uh, interactions between many atoms. Yeah, that is, uh, that is the, uh, a good uh, summary of, 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 of this kind of physics. And of course, when we celebrated this, uh, we uh, opened this bottle here and filled uh, uh, the glass, and then we got the next idea. Yeah? Uh, so, why don't we put two ensembles, two things into the cavity? Yeah? Uh, it inspired us uh, and eventually led to uh, what we call now nuclear level engineering. Um, so, this is a transition to the next slide here. Uh, maybe, yeah, we have another uh, cavity that is now uh, in the third order mode where I have got it here for few distribution, three maxima in the third order mode, and we have uh, yeah, one um, ensemble in the center. Um, uh, we start with, and um, what is plotted here now, uh, we have the decay width um, plotted here on the vertical axis. And uh, we have the ground state, the uh, uh, ground state has zero, zero decay width, it's, uh, it's an infinitely long lifetime, of course. And uh, here we have a finite uh, decay width for the ensemble here, and it's anti node in the maximum, um, as, I, uh, as we have shown, uh, as I have shown before. So we have a large uh, line width, which uh, is a super radiant enhancement. If we uh, yeah, measure this, it looks like this. Yeah, uh, so if we measure the absorption on this transition here, uh, we measure this uh, here, uh, uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, and we get it to the lunch shift. Um, uh, <coughs> but uh, okay, now we put a second ensemble into the cavity here. We, uh, we posit another nanometer thin or sub nanometer thin layer uh, here, uh, uh, falling into the node of the cavity field. Uh, that means that the photonic density of states here at this position is much smaller than here. So we can consider these ensembles here subradiant. That means decay with a much smaller decay uh, width. Uh, so we have a small gamma here in the node. And uh, then we have uh, yeah, a coupling of these layers, uh, radiated coupling to the vacuum field of the cavity. Yeah? And so that we can have many, many transitions here on this. Uh, um, uh, and the meta state between this. Level here, which has a much longer lifetime than this one here. Um, and, and we have many transitions mediated here by the cavity field. Uh, and this is actually yeah, uh, the reason um, uh, we, um, what we observe actually uh, that is uh, the phenomenon of vacuum induced transparency. The interference of all these pathways from here to the excited state, on the ground of the excited state, which can go over. Uh, multiple transitions here uh, uh, involving this metastable state here, the superposition of all these amplitudes with zero at resonance. That's the exact resonance what it, where this uh, material would be completely opaque otherwise. Yeah, and that is EIT, electromagnetic uh, induced transparency, a key phenomenon of quantum optics, and that's what we uh, uh, essentially observed in an experiment where we prepared such a system uh, at, at, at Petra here in Hamburg. The supercom. And um, yeah, so that, that is actually um, uh, yeah, uh, another example of uh, how these cavities can be used as a laboratory for quantum optics. Effectively, we created a three level system uh, uh, 
by properly putting the hybrid process atoms in an ensemble, in two ensembles inside of the cavity. Yeah, and then we, uh, yeah, uh, have applications as, uh, uh, as you know, EIT uh, enables us to observe slow light, so to say. Uh, how, how does this work? I mean, we, we, we uh, destructively interfere, uh, uh, reduce the absorption at resonance to zero, uh, or almost zero, yeah, that is the absorption <coughs> part, uh, and that reveals uh, that we can view to this present part, we have access to this present part only, which has a very steep slope here at, at the uh, zero detuning. And that means that the group velocity here, uh, which is uh, scales with one over this, this slope here uh, of, of uh, the dispersive part, is very, very small. And we have uh, actually observed values of a few hundred meters per second in, uh, uh, inside of the cavity for this nuclear rest of radiation at resonance. Um, Another application would be uh, uh, an access to, um, to non-linearity non because the, uh, the first order um, or zero order rate of perfection um, uh, it is cancelled and we would get access to the uh, higher order contributions to the index of perfection. Uh, but this is uh, for the future, that is not what we have uh, done so far. Um, <coughs> and um, I want to move on here. Uh, with this uh, little outlook on, on, on further <coughs> applications. Um, so, um, further applications, what we move, how we move on is uh, to enhance um, the uh, light matter coupling uh, by putting many, many, many cavities sort of on top of each other um, in some type of such a multi layer structure. <coughs> uh, so, you um, can, can see that here. And uh, we also again uh, look at the reflected signal. We selected the nuclear resonance scattering by a particular polarization filtering technique because the uh, nuclear resonance scattering uh, leads to some extreme optical activity that means sigma to pi scattering that we can then filter out by a polarization analyzer. As you see here, what we observe the spectral response shows a splitting of the line uh, uh, if we cross um, over uh, the drag angle of this uh, structure here and the splitting. Uh, uh, yeah, if you plot it here as a function of the detuning um, of um, the radiation of that drag angle of this periodic structure shows a normal mode splitting, but as a signature of uh, a selected strong coupling and the formation of a nuclear polariton. Um, that is another example uh, of these layer structures uh, or coupled cavities, and uh, this enabled us also to um, access the um, Temporal resolved version of the strong coupling, namely uh, uh, the Rabi oscillations, or well, it's sort of generalized Rabi oscillations, then the periodic energy interchange between these two uh, cavities here, resonant energy interchange, is on these oscillations here. Uh, and uh, uh, here we were uh, again um, convincing to uh, show this visualization here on the uh, cover. Uh, where this article was uh, published. So this is also a short view on, on another application that we um, um, uh, <coughs> um, uh, measured and observed um, using these um, thin film systems uh, uh, from the cavity to uh, multi-cavity coupling and close uh, to strong electric coupling uh, in, uh, <coughs> features. Yeah, um, another um, uh, Recent application is uh, what we go through quickly uh, here. Um, it's a resonant propagation along the axis of a waveguide, uh, where uh, the collaboration is uh, from Dallas Group and Göttingen, where we have um, yeah, uh, investigated what happens if radiation propagates inside of this layer, in the inside of the cavity, not in a necessarily coupled, but front, so called front coupled, here is an enlarged version. Again, a, a thin layer inside of the guiding layer, and we have here as a function of the propagation system, we have here the sample, and we can uh, select a certain propagation depth for so this triangle as a sample seen from the top, uh, and the incident X rays come here uh, and propagate here along uh, the sample. If we shift this uh, relative to the beam, we can realize uh, longer uh, propagation lengths, and that's what we have. Done uh, 
Uh, so here we see uh, such an oxidation, um, which reflects actually the periodic emission and absorption, <coughs> emission and absorption of the radiation inside of the chemistry. And uh, so this, of course, is uh, enhanced if we have the longer propagation distance and an even longer propagation distance. So that is for the first time uh, yeah, uh, the uh, enhancement of the light matter coupling by just enlarging the propagation distance um, uh, along the axis of uh, the cavity. Um, and this is also a recent um, uh, experiment from this year, uh, so that is uh, still um, under the evaluation, but it's really just on a, on a, on a good way um, to uh, be written up. And um, yeah, so I, I want to move on this. Uh, so far, these examples were actually resulted in the spatial control of photon emission from excited feedback. Now I come to uh, the temporal control. Uh, I think I, I skipped this here. Uh, how much time do I still have? Uh, five, five, five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. Okay, then I better go very quickly through the really can control, for example, levels with uh, uh, microwaves. And um, uh, shift the temporal heat pattern here in a controlled way by uh, inserting very short microwave pulses on, uh, on the system and uh, can really uh, uh, shift uh, the temporal response in a very controlled way. Um, <coughs> um, and uh, uh, here we have a quantum memory with a Doppler frequency cone. Um, that is, yeah, we have realized a frequency cone with the 17th here. And the frequency code is nothing else but in this case a realization of, uh, of, of, of different absorbers that are uh, uh, shifted in energy by uh, equidistant uh, displacements here. So these were uh, basically um, uh, realized in a uh, um, fashion where we have seven iron foils resonant absorbers on electromagnetic drives as they are used in, in the of spectroscopy. So here is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is at rest here, and we uh, get as a result of this temporal, this uh, this energy superposition, we get uh, these uh, these readings here uh, <coughs> uh, on, a, on a temporal way. That actually allows us then, by changing the properties of this comb, to to tune and shift the uh, spectral responses here of these peaks and control the emission of uh, photons from this arrangement, which is then uh, yeah, called a quantum memory, you can store a quantum state of a photon with pulse shape of the incident photon and release it in a controlled way at a later time. That's also a work in progress here. And uh, yeah, uh, in the uh, last, um, uh, uh, very last uh, developments were uh, uh, it's a transition to from single to multiple of excitations of nuclei. Um, uh, <coughs> Uh, that means um, yeah, what we had so far, the experiments I have described so far, the reading is only single photons interacting at a given time with the ensemble of the idea. So this is yeah, this method basically uh, uh, established in 1985 and uh, recent uh, development I have shown here always uh, with uh, the very few photons per pulse uh, that we Obtain sufficiently many in our experiment is just the fact that the repetition rate of these sources is very high in the megahertz. So then we can, can still get enough photons actually um, uh, to uh, do the experiment. This uh, uh, situation qualitatively has changed with the availability of X ray lasers like the European X ray in Hamburg, uh, where you uh, probably have heard of, where we can have uh, so called self amplified stimulated. Uh, and uh, emission um, <coughs> um, radiation with several hundred uh, photons per single pulse. So that means we have access to new phenomena like exploring photon correlations, modeling rate effects uh, uh, coming into play. We can even think about uh, creating non classical states of X ray light and even, yeah, as I said, collective effects, correct resonant energy shifts, uh, even with many, many photons at a time. And uh, yeah, so um, this is a short look at the evolution of the brilliance of these sources uh, uh, leading to the development of X-ray lasers. So there is a, a, a log plot here of uh, this 
Wir rufen auch gut, auch die Gründungsgründe, die es gründet hier, irrelevant hier, zu manchen auch Gründungsverfalls, ähm, oder, 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 And that is the one uh, in Hamburg, uh, an area view of the European X-ray laser in Hamburg, uh, uh, with the accelerators started uh, in the campus going all the way to Schleswig-Holstein. Not all the way to Denmark, uh, not that long, but uh, in the direction at least. Uh, uh, and, uh, so, uh, and the current director is uh, from Denmark, actually. Uh, uh, he's doing a very good job there. Uh, so this is a two kilometer long accelerator structure here. Um, uh, they're very impressive and uh, almost the same length are the photon beam lights. And, uh, and eventually, yeah, uh, so we did the first experiment, uh, with the resonant experiment at the European experiment. I have not the time to explain that here in detail. I just wanted to show you the first temporal reading pattern that we have recorded, um, uh, that actually, uh, could be explained theoretically with our uh, uh, tools that we have uh, for describing this uh, physics, but uh, we uh, immediately discovered a, a significant discrepancy. So the fit here, uh, the simulation required the assumption of a one micrometer thick foil of iron, uh, despite the fact that we had plug in an eight micrometer thin foil, and uh, we have confirmed this that it was indeed an eight micrometer thin foil. Uh, so there is a difference, a fundamental difference. In this interaction uh, of uh, these resonant absorbers, it would be extremely intense light from the European, from, from X ray laser sources, uh, a discrepancy that we have not resolved yet. Yeah. So I, I think I leave this here as a, as a last um, uh, scientific slide. Uh, I have to move over and skip uh, the other things that I had intended to show you, but I think that it's really too much. I just want to move over to um, to the outlook um, uh, uh, summary. So I think I can show you what is possible with the synchrotrons. Uh, uh, show you how these data cavities are a laboratory to access to uh, transport hydrophobic effects into the regime of x rays. The perspectives I mentioned um, uh, that open uh, up the, the use of X ray lasers. This is uh, just at the beginning. We have just started to see the first experiments. And uh, kindly, I don't want to close uh, without mentioning all my co workers here, which I have not the time to read them through. But you see all the institutions that are uh, involved here uh, Jena, Daisy, uh, Frank, uh, Daisy, Heidelberg, where he was. Uh, uh, Erlangen, uh, Würzburg, uh, and the various human facilities, theoretical support, and funding, of course, without uh, which uh, this was not possible. And there uh, are presenters available uh, if you are interested in. Uh, so you see a list of the there are some gaps out here, so that uh, the people fit in. Still, uh, if you want to join us, uh, you're welcome. Uh, and, um, uh, and this is a new lab actually. Uh, we are uh, 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 move in uh, early next year uh, where we have already moved in some of our equipment to the operate there. And in there are, yeah, it's a grand uh, competition here if you want uh, more information, just write an email. Otherwise, uh, in any case, I will close. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.